Welcome to the Elk Shape YouTube channel. Dan, the fitness man, Staten here. So today, I've made a decision on what broadhead I'm gonna use for 2021 elk season. Come along, I'm gonna explain how I went through the process, and you're gonna find out which broadhead I hope to put through both lungs of a big bull elk. So the criteria that I, I have for broadheads is super simple. Uh, I'm going to go with an, a fixed broadhead. I think most folks who've been to the channel before understand that I, I have a huge um, appreciation for fixed broadheads, specifically versus an expandable. And this is all just my personal experience. We have this uh, mantra we say at, at Elk Shape here, and it's ABT, ABT, always be tinkering. And what that means is for you to tinker with your setup for what you're going to hunt based on your archery skill and so for me personally I'm looking for a broadhead that I'm looking for a couple of boxes to check and here's what they are number one I'm looking for very sharp like sharp AF I need a broadhead that's sharp to the touch I don't want to resharpen it I think it's just gonna be a brand new broadhead out of the package that I'm going to shoot and help with number two it's got to be fixed and I'm looking for something that's super durable I like a chisel tip uh, not a huge two blade kind of guy, never have been. I did shoot my first animal with a single bevel and I love those cut on contacts and they make a lot of sense when it comes to penetration. However, shooting 75 pound bows, 80 pound bows in the past, I have never had an issue with penetration. I've always gotten my arrows to go all the way through. Uh, I've shot into shoulder blades, scapula. Uh, I've gone in through the shoulder knuckle. Uh, didn't get a pass through, but I got into where I needed to. So ultimately, I don't make decisions based on penetration. I make decisions based upon sharpness and then hole size. Knowing that I'm not gonna shoot an expandable, uh, I wanna get a triangle type hole. So I'm looking for a three or four blade fixed broadhead. The next thing is, I'm looking for that broadhead to put a hole on both sides of the animal. I personally am not on the level of some people. I want blood on the ground. I understand people want to shoot broadheads that maybe uh, penetrate, but they don't leave a lot of blood on the ground, but they do a ton of damage inside and the animal does die. That's great, but for me, is it too much to ask for both? Where not only am I getting a good wound channel and creating a lot of damage to that tissue and creating hypovolemic shock, but I'm also getting a hole on the entry and the exit and I'm not getting any deflection. I can go break through ribs and my arrow is gonna exit in the same trajectory that it went in. So that's very, very important to me. Uh, the last thing is gonna be choosing your weight. So for me, my broadhead, it makes a lot of sense for me running the TKOs that I am this year to not worry so much about putting a lot of weight up front into the insert or half cert or out cert in the t into the componentry it makes more sense to take that same amount of weight and put it into the broadhead. So this year I have elected to go with 125 grain Micro Hades 3 blade. I've gone with 100 grains in the past. This year I got a little lighter GPI with the TKO, but still the structural integrity that I'm looking for. Instead of putting a lot of weight into the insert and impact collar, I'm just gonna put about 70 grains into the front of the arrow with the gold tip insert, that's their standard insert. And then from there, I'm going to put 125 grain broadhead. That means the broadhead, the ferrule, the blades are a little thicker. The ferrule's a little th like more rigid and tough. And to me, it makes more sense to put more weight into the broadhead versus put it into the component tree. Um, I've had a lot of great luck with the Micro Hades 3 blade. Uh, I think that they source their steel right here in the US. The broadhead itself is made in the US. And I know for a fact that they're extremely sharp. And most importantly, they're extremely affordable. And, and those are the things that I'm looking for, so that's why I've elected. The other broadheads that I've tested are really awesome, so I'm going to keep one iron wheel with bleeders, 125, like solid. That's gonna be, I'm gonna have one arrow with that in my quiver. I'm also gonna keep an Annihilator XL in my quiver. So I'll have three Micro Hades, those will be A, B, C arrows, and then those last two will be the, the ones I just mentioned uh, in case I can get a follow-up shot or whatever. Uh, ultimately, it came down to me to 
putting the weight up front in the broadhead, so I got the 125, and it came down to flight. Uh, I'm not super caught up on penetration and, and having a two blade or a single bevel. That does, I actually caught up on having blood on the ground and the broadhead that flies the best. And for me, the ultimate test is anything about past 50 yards. And so I never really shoot it out too far out, I'd say 16 under, but I have taken follow-up shots way past 60. And if I get an opportunity to take a follow-up shot, I'm gonna send it. So hopefully you guys can appreciate how I went through this process. So we're gonna go through each broadhead's arrow flight and how I tested it. Check this out. Job, Annihilator. I'm getting a workout by the way. guys down okay so the dark horse a little hot let's talk about this broadhead first 
the VPA is really affordable, good materials, made in America. I like the solid design. Uh, edge retention's good. You could resharpen it. It's affordable. Flies really, really well. I'd say it's the dark horse because it surprised me how well it flew out my bow for my setup. I would be honored to shoot this broadhead. Uh, I think it's an awesome design. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll keep one in my quiver this year. Next up is the Annihilator 125 XL. I don't like the smaller one. I like the, the size of this one. I didn't like how it flew out at 100, but I thought it flew, and at 80 it was a little low too. But at 70 and 45, it was awesome. So I, if I were to use this, I would probably keep my shots under 70. I think this thing would absolutely crush animals. I know Micah, one of the owners of this company. I think they're awesome. Uh, I think you can resharpen and everything is just legit on, on what this thing looks like it could do on animals. I will keep one in my quiver. You can't go wrong with this one either. Iron Wheel 125 solid. I prefer the solid over the vented. I like the single bevels, but I think all in all, I have more of these, so I would be comfortable using these. Uh, I only have three single bevels and they're all pretty beat up as I used them for practice and shot a bear with one and they did awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna probably keep one of these. The flight surprised me at 100. It could have been me, but it grouped with the Annihilator off, quite a ways off, a few inches off. Um, all the other distances, it, it flew really true. I know Iron Wheel Bill. I think he's got the best materials and the best engineering mind. So my challenge for you, Mr. Bill, is that you make me a material like this in a three blade for 2022 and we'll call it the elk shape three blade make it in a 100 or 125 or even a 150 again i like my weight up front i'm not running an impact collar i'm not putting a bunch of extra weight into the collar i want all my weight into the broadhead the workhorse of the arrow um, i know bill and he, they make great products so i'm going to keep one of these i have enough to where i'm going to keep one of these in my quiver this year maybe it'll be a follow-up shot but I think, I think all in all, this is a great one. The reason why I'm not gonna use it as my primary is quite honestly, these little baby bleeders and this two blade design, I, it's the best for penetration hands down, but that's not a concern of mine. My concern is blood on the ground, an entry and exit hole, which I don't think this will give me as big of one as the Grim Reaper, which I'm about to talk about. But I think all in all penetration, it's a no brainer. And this is just a, a great setup. Um, so what I'm running this year is the Grim Reaper Micro Hades 3 blade. I've used it in the past and I've also noticed that my bow just spits these out better than any broadhead personally. That's what works for me. I know that this leaves a good entry and exit hole. I know that that chisel tip allows it to grind through things and stay on the path that it should be on. And I've killed a couple elk frontal with this. I don't condone frontals but it just it, it worked out to where I made those shots and had phenomenal results. I've killed probably five or six elk broadside or quartering away. It can get through all of that and it's tough. I've even shot through scapula with this broadhead and had it not go all the way through but get into the lungs and I was able to recover that elk. The, I've killed antelope, deer, bear. It's made in America, it's sourced in America and it's very, very affordable which is really important to me because not everybody can afford you know, some of these higher end broadheads. All in all, all these broadheads are phenomenal options. You cannot go wrong. I didn't test them all. So don't comment, hey, you should try this, this, that, the other. This is what I narrowed my selections down to. I'm really pleased with all of them. I'd be fine to have any of them in my quiver. But again, recap, Grim Reaper Micro Hades 3 blade. I'll have three arrows, one, two, and three with those. I'll have my fourth arrow, an Iron Wheel 125 solid. And then I'll have my last arrow, that Annihilator and I'm going to hunt everything from antelope, elk, bear, audat, elk, elk, and elk. So it's gonna be a great season. I'm gonna finish this video with Josh Jones coming in, giving his two cents on um, the broadhead that I chose. And then I'm also gonna finish with this, guys. Uh, you got to tinker. You got to figure out what, what you shoot the best. And I know I didn't use a hooter shooter today, and I know I'm not a hooter shooter, and I know there's variable winds today, but all in all, I was shooting and feeling really good today. And I like to test what, what works best for me at my skill level, for where I'm at on my journey, for the equipment that I've chosen. I challenge you all to go ABT and test your own theories, ideas, and figure out what works best for you. I respect that. Without further ado, MFJJ.
Yeah. Nothing like a stressful, chaotic 12 hour day to start and then let's film something, see what comes out of this. And, and all this high definition, you're gonna see how bad my skin is. Yeah. <laughs> so just gonna touch on a couple of things that Dan's gonna be using and that we settled on uh, for his build. Uh, number one, we went through a lot of different hardware components in the arrows and actually settled on this specific insert right here. One interesting, cool thing about the 204 arrows is a lot of their different hardware fits in each individual arrow. Um, and myself, I, this is probably bucking the grain of what most people would say. Everyone wants a, seems like they want a collar or something, they want to cover the end of the arrow. And I believe the arrow, the end of the arrow fails, not because of the collar, but because your insert right here is really weak. And if you use a solid one piece stainless insert without a flare on it, flush, it's not going to bend or it's very likely to not bend. I don't believe you need all that extra sleeve and adapter over it, which forces you to lengthen your arrow. By using a collar, it's gonna force you to make your arrow longer. By making your arrow longer, you're going to weaken the spine. And then by making your arrow longer, you're also going to reduce your FOC percentage. And yeah, you're adding a collar to get that back, but at the end of the day, you're gonna gain more whole overall arrow weight and need a stiffer arrow to achieve the same thing. So for my best percentages and running the best uh, overall setup that I can possibly do, I really don't want to use a collar. Maybe I'll be persuaded on that at some point, but at this point, if I can use a solid one piece stainless steel insert adapter like this gold tip insert, which we'll get up on the website here pretty quick in case people want to buy these. This is not a victory insert. This is a gold tip traditional 600 spine insert that fits in those RIP TKOs perfectly. It's the same diameter as the shaft, so you get good pull. After shooting several different broadheads, settled on the old tried and true Grim Reaper Micro Hades. Sorry, trying to get that to focus for you. In a 125, by going to a 125, you're keeping more structural weight in that broadhead itself. It's going to be more durable. It's going to be less likely to bend, thus giving you an overall better functioning deal. The other thing that this does is because it has a separate chisel point it's most likely to not transfer angle or transfer direction it's designed to hit something and go straight through it not to find the path of least resistance like most other broadheads that are just straight lead tip whether it's this guy or this guy or variations that look like it this is designed to glance off of things that shape so it's most likely to not actually directly go straight through. If you hit the edge of something, it's going to deflect a little bit or more likely to deflect. And I know you'll probably want to argue that and I get that, but you know, putting a hundred thousand bows together over the years for bow hunters and seeing what they use and what happens to them and hearing their stories, something like this is more likely to hit the animal in the spot that you're pointing at and follow the direction and path it goes on yet still penetrate. And we're still getting full pass throughs with stuff like this. So, at uh, you know 400 to 450 grain overall setup so i don't really feel the need to go the other direction uh he is going to still keep a couple of these in his quiver and be able to have the option of shooting them but um for all the testing that we did and all the things that we tried to settle on that's what we're going to go with that combo right there which for my money is lethal as it gets so hopefully that gives you something to talk about and gives you something to get feathers ruffled about or excited about one way or another so enjoy that on one more side note we do have our own youtube channel at podium archer youtube check us out tim's trying to make me make it look better i'm doing a terrible job but i'm trying really hard um and make sure to if you get a chance uh, we a lot of these products are on our website if you want to give them a try uh 99 and up is free shipping and we try to keep this stuff in stock as much as we can and as often as we can there are some shortages out there as you're probably aware but do everything within our power to get it out to you as quick as you can so if there's something you're looking for Check us out, podiumarcher.com. Might have what you need. Thanks a lot.